Welcome to 2024, and I hope everyone's doing well and had a happy new year. I know we had a good New Year's over here. We kind of just hung out. And as you can see behind me, I have a crib. I actually have a son that's going to be born in the next couple weeks. So I'm very excited for that. Not sure how much poker I'll get done, but I'll try to get out there as frequently as I can. This vlog was filled at Champions in Houston, Texas about a month ago. And I hope that you guys enjoy. I open up pocket aces early in the session to $50 over a limp. Nerdy calls on the button to my left, and the initial limper benzene makes the call as well. We go three ways to the flop with the pot at $170. The flop is the queen of diamonds, 10 of spades, 10 of hearts. It checks to me and I decide to continue for a small size. I expect my opponents to continue with quite a few straight draws here, as well as queen x and some pocket pairs. Nerdy makes the call and so does benzene. It's definitely possible that one of my opponents has a 10x combo when they both continue on the flop, but I would expect them to primarily be raising, especially with their good 10x combos. So I think they are weighted towards queen x and these straight draws. We go to the turn with the pot at $335. The turn is the four of clubs, essentially a complete blank, unless someone has pocket fours. It checks to me and I decide to pot control a little bit in case one of them does have a 10x. I'm not entirely sure that I will get three shoots of value versus a queen. There's not too many scare cards for my specific hand as I block straight and my opponent cannot make a better two pair. We go to the river, which is the 10 of clubs, giving me the nut full house. Benzene leads small for $50, and I think I have a pretty pure raise here. I want to go pretty large here as I expect to get called by a queen x combo the vast majority of the time. If he has a 10x combo, I would expect him to bet larger most of the time, but I also expect him to always re-raise over my raise. So, so if we get to that point, we'll make a decision. I raised to $325. I honestly think that I could have probably raised a little bit larger here, but I think the size is perfectly fine. Nerdy folds and Benzene quickly calls. I show pocket aces and he says I'm good and I scoop this 1k pot. In this hand, I see three limps ahead of me and I open up pocket fives in the big blind to $40. Only Nerdy continues and we go heads up to the flop with the pot at $90. The flop is what you're hoping for when you open up pocket fives as I flop a set on the five of diamonds, jack of hearts, six of diamonds board. I continue with a check with the plan to check raise or allow my opponent to catch up with a little bit of their weaker equity. Nerdy continues for $50 in position and I raise it to $200. There's a ton of draws out here so generally I do want to be building this pot. He thinks for a little bit and decides to re-raise me to $450. I think he's going to be doing this with a lot of his very strong draws. So he's going to have ace high flush draws and combo draws as well as jack x combos that contain a flush draw he could have a two pair combo he could have just a very strong jack like ace jack king jack it's definitely possible that i'm losing to exactly pocket sixes that he limped but i think it's very unlikely people are very rarely three betting on the flop so i expect him to have a very strong draw here or a very strong made hand and i don't really expect too many folds from him when he's put 450 dollars of his 1250 in the middle so I decided to go all in for $12.50. He snapped folds, so he was just kind of full of it this time, but I probably gained as much as I could have. Possibly could have just called his $450 raise and let him blast off on the turn, but I think there's a lot of cards where he's not necessarily continuing on. And I want to make sure that if he does have a lot of equity that he does put the money in. If he's able to check back and realize his equity on the river and he misses, I don't think I make any more. But overall, pretty happy to pull this pot in. I open up king 10 of clubs from early position and it folds around to benzene in the straddle he three bets to 120 dollars i'm getting a reasonable price and i'm in position so i elect to continue with a call we go to the flop with the pot at 250 dollars the flop is the jack of spades king of hearts two of spades giving me top pair he continues here for 105 dollars i definitely want to continue here with a call i'm behind his hands like aces ace king pocket kings pocket jacks and king jack but I'm definitely beating a lot of his bluffs like ace queen and ace 10, as well as all of his spade draws. He's also going to be betting some weaker pocket pairs here, trying to gain a little bit of denial as well as value from my draws. We go to the turn with the pot at $460. The turn is the jack of clubs pairing the board. Benzene checks, and I think I want to check back here most of the time. There's definitely some merit in getting a little bit of value with my hand as well as denial. But I think that he's definitely going to be checking aces at some frequency, as well as hands like ace-king and king-queen. And I don't necessarily want to be bloating the pot versus those hands. I also don't know how much value I'm going to be getting versus some of the weaker pocket pairs or some of his draws. 
And being in position, I get to see a free river card. The river is the queen of hearts and benzene once again checks to me. And I think I have a pretty interesting decision at this point. I'm pretty positive I have the best hand, but I don't know if there's too much value to be gained. It's still possible he checks a hand like aces or ace king here, and he's just trying to pot control on his end. Scared of the jack x combos, the king queen, and the straights. But I also don't know how much value I get against him. I chop with any of his weaker king x, even though that's unlikely. I only really get called by possibly ace queen or queen 10 and get value from those hands. I don't think any of his smaller pocket pairs are going to be calling, so... And there's definitely merit in just not reopening the action. Unfortunately, he does have ace-queen here, so I possibly could have gained a little bit more value with my hand, but I think I'm fine with my play. So we're playing a little bit of a mini game in this hand, which is going to influence the hand a little bit. We're playing something called the kill game. Essentially, how the kill game works is that if you win one hand, you get the kill button. If you win the following hand after that, Every player has to pay you a bounty. In this instance, it was $25 from each player. So if you win a hand, you're very, very, very incentivized to play the next hand. I had just won the previous hand, so I do have the kill button here. It folds around to Chris Yu. He opens the button to $20, and I elect to make the call on the big blind with queen four offsuit. Not typically a hand that I would be continuing with. And nerdy calls in the straddle. We go three ways to the flop with the pot at $65. The flop is the four of hearts, 10 of hearts, two of spades giving me the backdoor flush draw with my pair. I check and Nerdy donks out for $35. Chris makes the fold and I think I have a pretty strong continue here with the additional equity that I have. Definitely a hand that I could raise at a small frequency as well. We go to the turn, which is the five of hearts. I check and flow to Nerdy and he checks back. At this point, I expect Nerdy to continue with most of his 10x combos in position. He can still check back on the river. I also expect him to continue with two pair or anything better like a straight or a set. Although I think it's very unlikely that he has those hands as played. When he checks back here, I expect him mostly to have weaker pairs. Whether that's a weaker 10x, a 4x combo, a 5x combo, or something like pocket sixes. We go to the river, which is the ace of diamonds, bringing a four liner to the straight. As played, I think I have a pretty significant range advantage. I think it's much more likely that I have the flushes. I think it's also much more likely I have a straight. I think if he had a 3x combo, he would have continued at a very high frequency on the turn when he has the open ender. Because of that, and because I think that he could have a weaker pocket pair, a 5x combo, or possibly a stronger 4x combo, I decide to turn my hand into a bluff, especially with the Queen of Hearts blocker. I decide to overbet for $200. As again, I'm very incentivized to win the hand here. I don't necessarily want to check back if I have just a medium to low amount of showdown value when I'm guaranteed $25 from each player. He does make the fold, so I collect the bounties from every player, which I believe was an additional $150. The next notable hand once again involves the kill button. This time my opponent has it, but it will play a role in this hand. I open up ace-queen from early position to $20. Nerdy calls to my left, and Benzene calls in the big blind. We go three ways to the flop with the pot at $65. The flop is the ace of hearts, eight of clubs, five of spades. I'm almost always ahead on this board. There's possibly some two pair combos or some sets here, but I pretty much have the nut top pair combo as my opponents never have ace king. It's a pretty dry board overall. There's very few draws here. There's some gut shots with the 3-2, 4-3 style of hands and 7-6 is an open ender. But this is a very small part of my opponent's ranges. I want to be checking this hand at some frequency. Even though I'm primarily going to be betting, I think it is good to throw in a check here, especially multi-way. So when Benzene checks, I check behind, and Nerdy also checks behind. We go to the turn, which is the two of hearts. It's possible my opponents have ace two or pocket twos, but I think it's very unlikely. There's very few combos of that. Four three makes a straight, but I would expect Benzene to only have the suited combos, and if Nerdy ever had that combo, I would expect him to be betting on the flop. So I'm feeling pretty safe with my hand. I think the standard line is probably to start betting here, but I think with the kill button in play and this card really not bringing in any additional equity for my opponents too often, I think I want to give them a chance to either catch up and make a made hand that I'm ahead of or for Nerdy to blast off as he's incentivized to win this hand with the kill button. So I check and Nerdy decides to check behind. So he either has a weak made hand or complete air. I think if he had a stronger hand than me, he would have bet at this point. And if he has a good draw, like a flush draw, or a, even a gut shot, like a 4x or 3x combo, I would expect him to be betting here. The river is the three of spades. 
So although it's not my favorite card in the world, I think I'm still ahead most of the time. Benzene checks, and he's the one that's most likely to have a two pair combo or a straight here. So I think I want to start going for value at this point. Nerdy's had two chances to bet and he hasn't. I bet $50 into the $65 pot. Nerdy thinks for a little bit and he decides to raise me to $175. Pretty interesting raise from him as I expect his raises to primarily be his 4x combos, which I don't think there's very many of those as those probably would have been betting the turn at a high frequency, especially if it had a heart combo. So realistically, if he has a 4x combo, it's something like 5-4 4 deuce that already had a pair. And I think almost all of his two pair plus combos would have been betting at some frequency already. So although a raise looks pretty scary here on this four liner, I think I often have the best hand, especially when he has the kill button. I make the call, I show ace queen, and I scoop this $400 pot as he was bluffing. In this hand, I open up ace 10 offsuit from early position to $20. I've clearly made a lot of friends as Mike calls in middle position, Yusuf calls in the small blind, and Benzine calls in the big blind. We go four ways to the flop with the pot at $80, and the flop is the jack of clubs, queen of clubs, nine of diamonds. It checks to me, and I think my hand makes a ton of sense to continue here as a bluff, even into three players. I block the king 10 in the 10-8 straight, and my specific hand with the ace x is able to make the nut straight if a king rolls off. I also have the 10x of clubs, so I can barrel a lot of club turn or rivers. And unlike all of my other 10x combos like queen 10, jack 10, pocket 10s, and 109, 9 the ace high has very little showdown, especially multi-way. I continue for $35, and only Mike makes the call. We go heads up with the pot at $150, and the turn is the three of spades. This is a card that I'm going to want to be barreling at a very high frequency with all of my made hands, as well as a lot of my bluffs here. I want to apply a lot of pressure to his single pair combos and his flush draws here. I want to make him pay to see a river card especially when I'm out of position. If he does have a hand like queen 10, jack 10, 10, nine, he's gonna probably be calling turn and I'll probably have to triple barrel. But I think in general, it makes sense to apply the maximum amount of pressure here and use a large sizing. I continue for $175. He thinks for a little bit and he does make the call. So I do expect him to primarily have queen X combos here or a pair plus a draw, whether that's the club draw or the straight draw. It's also possible that he has a combo draw, something like the king X of clubs, or possibly the nut flush with the ace of clubs, both of which I think I can make fold pretty easily on the river. The river is another blank, which is the five of spades. And I think I just wanna apply the maximum amount of pressure here. I still have a massive range advantage. I'm gonna have all of the over pairs and sets that my opponent doesn't have. He frequently would have raised with his straights and his two pair on earlier straights which only strengthens my range. And I think I wanna use a very large sizing here and just try to really fold out all of his single pair hands and make even some of his hands like jack nine pretty uncomfortable. I continue with an over bet of $900. And finally he releases and we get the fold. It took three barrels, but I was able to pick up this pot. In this hand, Yusuf opens to $50 in the cutoff over the $10 limp. I looked down at ace jack offsuit in the small blind and I three bet to $225. This is a hand that definitely doesn't want to call pre-flop and have the big blind and straddle call behind as it plays particularly bad multi-way. But it is still a very strong hand and I'm very far ahead of most of Yusuf's range. He continues with a call and we go heads up to the flop with the pot at $465. The flop is the 10 of clubs, 9 of spades, king of clubs, giving me the gut shot with the backdoor nut flush draw. I think with this particular combo, I want to be betting at a high frequency, but I'm generally going to be using small sizes on these double Broadway boards. I continue for $155 and he makes the call. I think his range is going to consist of a lot of King X combos. He's going to have some 10 X combos and nine X combos. I would expect him to possibly call with some of his weaker pairs once, especially if they have a club, but primarily I would expect folds from hands like eight, seven, sixes, etc. If he does have a hand like queen Jack, I would expect him to raise here on this very wet board, as well as some of his two pair and set combos. Thankfully, I am blocking the straight as well. The turn is the seven of hearts. I don't think this really changes too much. He could possibly make a pair with something like eight, seven, but I don't think those type of hands are gonna hold up to aggression anyways. I think it makes sense to continue barreling my hand. I still have that ace of clubs and I can bluff a lot of club rivers. I also block the queen jack combos, as well as the stronger king x combos. And overall, I think I have a pretty strong range advantage. I continue for $475. He thinks for a little bit and makes the call. 
At this point, I think his range consists of mostly King X combos, although he could still have a hand like Queen 10, Jack 10, Queen 9 that has the straight draw to go along with its pair. I think he'll be calling one more time with those hands, but primarily it's going to be King Queen, King Jack style of hands, and probably some club draws that have either a combo draw or the 9 slash 7x of clubs. The river is the 10 of spades. Pretty interesting card. I think a lot of his 10x combos are going to be folding the turn at some frequency, stuff like Queen 10, Jack 10. I think hands like 10 9 would have raised the flopper the turn. And I think if he had a hand like Ace 10, he's probably folding the turn at a very high frequency. So I think overall, it's hard for the 10 to interact too strongly with his range. Although, to be fair, it's probably hard for me to have a 10x combo as well. I still have a lot of the ace king here. I have the over pairs. I do have sets here. I do have queen jack here. And even though I have the ace of clubs blocker, which is not my favorite card to have, as I would want him to have snap folds on the river, I think with the jack x and the nut advantage, I still want to continue here at some frequency. I continue with a very large size and I continue with a river bet of $1,050, trying to really apply pressure to all of his king x combos, but primarily all of his weaker pairs. Regardless, I think it's very hard for him to make a call here with a lot of his range. He tanks for a very, very long time, and ultimately he does make the fold, and I get this bluff through. I had a very solid session overall. Hopefully that trend continues into the new year. I made about $1,600. I appreciate everyone tuning in for the vlog, and if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys in the near future. Thanks. Bye.